Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. Beth was talking about uh, not cooking a meal. I cooked two meals since the baby was born. Um, so, I don't know, like, yeah, and I'm alive. And I'm not kidding you, it was grilled cheese and tomato soup from a can. Like, not, like I'm not joking you, both times. Like, true story. As soon, like, the day that, that, J, uh, that Marin was born, our daughter, Beth was like, I really want grilled cheese. So I was like, nailed it. So then I go, and I'm about to cook it. This is the first time, third time, the first of the three times, because I did, anyway, you'll understand later. Uh, my mom ended up cooking it the first day, because I didn't trust myself. But then the second time, my mom wasn't there, and I was like, I'm a big boy now, right? So I was like, got to figure it out, but I cooked the grilled cheese. But man, happy Easter. You know, this, this is the most important weekend uh, for those of us who follow Jesus. The day, this weekend where Jesus gave his life, but not only did he give his life, he actually came back. Right? The most important weekend that we have as believers where the grave is empty and our hearts are full. Right? Full of God's love that he poured out for us through Jesus on the cross that day that jesus overcame death to restore us and to to revive us and give us new life right that is the most important day that we celebrate as followers of jesus and the last things that somebody says is really important right the the things that people say that's my baby crying classic but um the last thing that somebody says before they pass away is really important and sometimes it's comical, sometimes it's profound, sometimes you're like, I don't even, it's like nonsense. But this week I was researching, what, what are some of the like famous last words that people had um, before they passed away? And some of these are absolutely incredible. So I'm just going to go through a few of them. Uh, this one is uh, Sir Winston Churchill. The last thing that he said was, I'm bored with it all. That's the last thing that he said when he's on and then a uh, baseball player's name is Pete Maravich. The last thing he was saying, he was playing in a pickup like baseball game. And the last thing he said was, I feel great. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what that means. So uh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, the last thing he said, I found this photo so interesting. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, he said, I have offended God and mankind because my work did not reach the quality it should have. They're like, you still have the most famous paintings in all of the universe, right? Like, and that was the last thing he said. And then there was this nun who, <laughs> this is what she said. Uh, she said, a woman who can fart is not dead. <laughs> so she said, because she had just like released gas, I guess, in this moment. And she said that and all the other nuns were laughing. And then uh, Oscar Wilde, what he said, he's a writer. He said, either that wallpaper goes or I do. <laughs> it's like, get a new interior designer. You know what I'm talking about? And then Bob Marley, musician Bob Marley, he said, money can't buy life. Right? This is what he said. And again, the last things that people say speak volumes to those of us who are still living, right? The last things that people say um, can encourage us to keep going, encourage us to value life more, encourage us to love better, encourage us to change our priorities. Some of the last things that people share is really important. And I wanna, what I want to do today is I want to go through the kind of the whole Easter weekend um, from Friday to Sunday. And some of the things that Jesus said um, kind of in, you know, the last, you know, few moments of his time on earth. Some of the last things he said, and I think what they can mean for us today. And in John 19, verse 28 to 30, it says this, Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill the scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, and they put it on a hyssop branch and held it up to his lips. And when Jesus had tasted it, he said this, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. The last thing that Jesus said before he was resurrected, it is finished. The famous last words of Jesus before the cross took its final blow on our king and on our savior, it is finished. And I want to give us a few things today, some thoughts today that kind of can come out of this that I think are really profound when it comes to this Easter, at least for me, and some of the things that I think we know, we, those of us, maybe we've been in church a long time, we know these things, but I think it's so important every Easter to remember the beauty of what took place that weekend, because I think sometimes we take it for granted, 
Sometimes we take our relationship with Jesus for granted. We, we sometimes forget the sacrifice that he made when he went to the cross. And so the first thing that I want to share is that, is this thought is paid in full. Paid in full. And this, this, this thought, you know, it is finished, is, is found in the book of John, like we just read. And it's, this, word, this word is translated, if you translate it from the Greek, what it really says, it is finished, really it also means paid in full. So when Jesus is hanging there, about to take his last, last breath, he's looking out at the people and he's saying, it is finished, it is paid in full. What he's saying is he's saying, what I'm about to do is going to change the course of human history. I've accomplished my mission. I've done everything that I was called to do. And I'm about to just step into the next thing. And this is going to be a powerful moment. But I think so interesting when Jesus says this, it's not this like epic moment. It's literally in a lot of ways, the people watching would have saw this as almost an epic failure. Right? Because they're just seeing, you know, his mom standing there, some of his friends, like people are standing there. He's saying it is finished. And then he bows his head and closes his eyes. That's the end of his life. You know, it wasn't like, like, like it is finished and then like he ascended into heaven. It was actually his death when he says it is finished. And I can imagine what people were thinking as they saw this moment happen. Jesus hanging lifeless on a cross as people's hope was vanished and fear was on the heart of his followers and they're thinking, am I next? Right? Am I gonna be the next one? Will they find me? Will they try and do the same to me? Will they be hanging me on a cross? Will they be whipping me? Will they be putting a crown on my head? Like, like are they gonna be doing the same thing to me? A lot of fear was present in this moment. I don't know the thoughts that were going through their minds, but I can imagine my thoughts if my hero was hanging lifeless on a cross. It is finished, paid in full. What does this even mean? He's dead. Now I'm left with nothing. My son is dead. My friend is dead. My savior is dead. So much for a savior, he couldn't even save himself. Maybe these would have been the thoughts rolling through the minds of the people around. I thought he was supposed to be the king. I thought he was supposed to be the son of God and he couldn't even save himself. If you remember, if you read through it, this is what the insults they were throwing at him, right? If you're so good, if you're the king, if you're so powerful, come on down from the cross. These are a lot of the thoughts rolling through the minds of these people in this moment. Maybe they were thinking, I wasn't finished with you yet, Jesus. What about my back pain, right? What about my financial situation? Where are you? We're, like, 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 it is finished. We barely even got started. Then there's silence, right? Silence. They take his body down. They bring him and they put him in the tomb. Close the thing. Silence. No hope, no joy, no peace. Just absolute silence. And the thing is, like, if you look back, they didn't know the end of the story yet. Like, they had heard Jesus talk. You know, they had seen, you know, Lazarus raised from the dead after four days. So I'm sure there was maybe a bit of is it going to happen? Like, like, is this going to happen? Is he going to come back? Like, what's going to happen? But absolute silence. Their hero was dead. He was gone. They didn't understand what he meant. They didn't understand. It is finished. What are you, what are you even talking about? But this is the truth. Is that our salvation, our saving, our freedom, our life was purchased. It wasn't free for God. To, uh, to get us our freedom. He purchased our freedom. He had to give it all up to ensure our saving. In Colossians 2, says this, you were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature uh, was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the changes, charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Our sin, our brokenness, our death nailed to the cross with Jesus. And I think for me, like I look, I look at my life and I'm thinking, at least for me, I think why, right? 
Like, at least for me, like I look at my life and how broken and horrible I have been in my life and the things I've done and the sin. I think, why would God put my sin on the cross with his son? Why? Like, like why? I don't deserve it. I, I don't deserve this, this freedom. I don't deserve this relationship. I don't deserve it. But he canceled the charges against us. Why? To give us life with Jesus. We are made alive with Christ. When he came out of the tomb, so did we alive with Jesus. Our sin, dead and gone on the cross. But life as he exited the tomb that, that day. When Jesus is saying it is finished, he's saying, I have came and I have accomplished everything I was set out to do. I did it all. He even says in his mind, he thought, okay, I need to you know, fulfill this. So he takes the horrible drink. Like, that's not what I would want to drink, to be honest. Sour wine, like, sounds horrible. He gets to the end of his journey knowing that he has done everything he had set out to do. And we see this in John 17, 4. It says this, I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And then in John 19, 10 says this, for the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. What he's saying, he's saying all the pain that I'm going through, all the suffering, all the stripes, all the mockery, the crown on my head, it's all worth it for you and for me. He has given us life and saved us from death. That is the beauty of this Easter weekend. That he gave his life, he paid it in full. Everything that we've done, he paid it in full. He took the penalty we were supposed to have so that way we could find relationship and find freedom and salvation. And then the number, the second thought I have when it comes to, you know, it is finished is it's free. The unreal thing to me that I think about is that it cost Jesus something. Right? Everything. It costs him, but it doesn't cost me anything. I don't have to go to the cross to find freedom. I don't have to go to the cross to find salvation. All I have to do is turn to Jesus, give him my life, and follow him wherever he leads me. This gift is free. And Romans 6.23 says this, for the wages of sin is death. Our humanity is set out to destroy us, to just kill us. It's the the enemy's coming to do this. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus our Lord. Free gift, eternal life. And our choice is to choose life or death. Yet Jesus took the death so we could have the opportunity to choose life. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to go buy something And it seems like it's a really good deal, but then you start looking at the fine print and you're like, this is a horrible deal. I went to get a new phone one time and they're like, free phone. I was like, count me in, right? Like, of course, like I'm gonna get a free phone. My my phone is like half a year old, but I need a new one, of course. It's North America, like it's a little old. The cameras works, but like there's a better one. So I go and I'm like, hey, I wanna get my my free phone. I'm like, oh, that's amazing. And then they start telling me all these amazing things. We're going to cancel this and give you this and all you got to do is this. And then at the very end, they're like, yeah, your bill today is like $356. I was like, for what? They're like, oh, you didn't read it in in this short section here, the 17 things you still have to pay for. And I was like, are you trying to trick me? Like, are you you trying to, 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 to cause problems in my life and in my marriage? Are you trying one time we, we, we went with uh, this, this, this internet provider and we, we, we go and, and all of a sudden they like triple charged us one month for, this, for a bill. So they charge us like $400 direct deposit out of our account, $400. And we call them like, what happened? They're like, it was a mistake. I'm like, I don't care. I want my money back. They're like, it's gonna be a week to 10 business days. I'm like, are you kidding me? You're a thief. But I was kinder than that. I said, how do I, I think Beth maybe even said, how am I supposed to feed my family? <laughs> Hilarious, you know. I would never say that. Like, she's way tougher than me. But the beauty of what Jesus did for us is there's no hidden fees. There's no strings attached. It's not like you accept it and then he's like, okay, by the way, here's, all the, here's the list of the 10 good things you gotta do today in order to maintain it. It's free. 
The gift is free. No fine print, no hidden fees, no sign up fees, just a free gift. All he asks for is your heart. He just wants you, how you are. He doesn't say it's free, but he says it's free. He doesn't say, but you gotta do this and you gotta do this. No, it's free. That's what makes this news so good is that it's the best for humanity and it's free for humanity. It's good and it's free. That's what makes this news so much so that we should be sharing it everywhere we go because it's a free gift. And yes, people are going to say, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. We say, Jesus loves you so much. He gave his life for you so you could find freedom in life. That's what makes this news so good. I'm losing my voice. Jesus really meant it when he said it's finished. He wasn't joking, right? Like, gotcha. No, he was serious. It is finished. I have paid their debt. And all they have to do is believe and they gain access to that freedom. We gain access to the inheritance. Yet a lot of us, we don't live that way. I think a lot of us, we live as if we have to be a certain way in order to be followers of Jesus. And yes, there's something like our lives will be changed. The closer we are to Jesus, everything will change, of course. But some of us were waiting to go to Jesus until we got our life figured out, until we got all our stuff put together. We're like, yeah, just wait a minute, Jesus. I got to deal with this. And he's like, just, just wait, Jesus, okay? Just wait a second. I got to deal with this. And he's like, no, just come to me as you are. And then I will make you whole. You don't have to be whole when you go to him. He says, no, come to me as you are and I will make you whole. We, sometimes we live our lives as if we have to earn his love and you don't. We could never earn it. We never could. There's not an amount of good things that I could do in order to gain access. The only thing that I can do is turn to Jesus and give him my life. It's free, free to receive and free for us to share. And the last thing I want to share today is this last thought is this, is he is risen. Not only is it finished, it is finished. He is risen. He's not dead anymore. He is risen. Now, this is that epic moment, right? You know, when he said it is finished, you know, there's still some agony in the air. There's still some confusion, not understanding, you know, what do we do from here? Where do we go from here? Should we flee? Should we run away? Should we go back to our old jobs? Should I start being a tax collector again and stealing money from my fellow brothers? Should I go catch some fish? There's not a lot of men on the hooks anymore. We got to go catch some fish. Is that what we should do? And this is exactly where the disciples found themselves. These exact questions and still contemplating what Jesus meant when he said it is finished. It's, it, it's, it's all good that you think it's finished, but we're still here alone, Jesus. We're, like, what do we do from here? Fear is all we feel, and this is exactly what happens in John 20, verse 19. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. It is finished, but now what? Still waiting for the next part of the story, right? It's like the first time you watch like a movie where like, at the, like there's a sequel and like the first movie ends and it's like horrible. You're like, I gotta see what happens. What's next, right? They're waiting for the next. They're waiting for what's gonna happen. It's like, what do we do? We're afraid. So they locked themselves in a room. They thought that locking themselves in a room was safer than being on the streets. How many times in our life do we live? Yes, we say, yes, it is finished. I got salvation. But yet a lot of us, we're still so locked in fear. We're not living as if our God is still alive today. As if he's still moving in our homes and in our churches and that he's still doing miracles. Some of us, we've locked ourselves in the room because we're so afraid of what people might think. The 
that Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. And why were they afraid? Well, they had just seen their Savior brutally beaten and thrown on a cross and die. That's why they were afraid. I don't know if you've ever felt this way. You've seen Jesus move. You've seen miracles. You've seen provision. You've seen his peace. You've seen his joy. And it still feels like fear is crippling you. Right? I think most of us have probably been in a moment like that. We've been following Jesus for 50 years. But every once in a while, there's this fear that creeps in of how am I going to pay my mortgage or my kid is so sick and I got to go to the hospital and we're so afraid. So afraid of what the future might look like and this is the disciples. But then this part is so powerful. Verse 20, it says this. Suddenly. I love that word suddenly because I don't know exactly what that means but my mind imagines what that means. Like imagine you're in your kitchen just with the fellas and you're cooking a meal and all of a sudden boom, boom, person shows up suddenly. Right? Like it wasn't like it was like a slow thing, right? It was like suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them his wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. So then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Peace be with you. There's two main things that Jesus leaves his disciples with in this moment. Two main things. Number one, he says this twice. He says, peace be with you. I don't know what your, what maybe fear is in your life. I don't know what you're walking through. I don't know the struggle. I don't know all of it. I know some of what's going on, but a lot of us, sometimes we have a lot of things going on that no one's even aware of. We haven't even told our spouse yet about our panic attacks or our anxiety or our fear, and we don't know what to do. Let those words speak to you as Jesus spoke to his disciples that again they're there he's dead they're like what do we do Jesus suddenly shows up and says peace be with you I believe that God today Jesus today is speaking those same words over you right now peace be with you you might think I don't know if I can keep going peace be with you but fear is so strong and my anger is so big and my pride is so full and it says peace in your situation, peace in your circumstance, peace in your moment. Allow his peace to come. And when Jesus showed up, like they're scared, they're locked in the room. It's not like he showed up and was like, what's wrong with you guys? He didn't say like, we've got idiots, right? He didn't say that to them. That's what, that's what when I was in high school, a teacher used to say that to us. We've got idiots, right? He'd say that. We like mess up, it's hilarious to me but so that's the context of why I said that you're like I don't know what happened in your high school of course you don't he didn't say that though he didn't say what are you guys doing that's not the first thing he said he said peace be with you he didn't say he didn't even say where's your courage he said he didn't say you have little faith he didn't say get behind me Satan which he'd said those things before. He said, peace be with you. He says, I see your fear. He says, I see your pride. I see your anger. I see it. But I'm back. And the second thing he says after peace be with you he says receive the Holy Spirit right receive the Holy Spirit then he breathed on them right he says no longer are you going to be going through life alone not relying on your own wisdom not relying on your own strength but you're going with God and Holy Spirit and we're going to go conquer the world 
We gain the fruit of the Spirit. We gain the gifts of the Spirit to go forward. We have an arsenal of tools in order to share Jesus better with the world. To bring miracles and to bring God's power into our broken world. God holds us up as we keep on going. He is risen. We have to start living in that reality. The finished work of the cross, yes, salvation, yes, freedom, yes, relationship. But we can't just live on Friday because Sunday's coming. He is risen. He is alive. He is moving. He is risen. Don't be afraid. His peace will come. I want to leave you. I thought, as I was praying about this, this was just this morning, just about peace be with you. It really reminded me of when Jesus was born and and the shepherds find out Jesus is there. I want to read this. I want to leave this as an encouragement for you. The same encouragement the angels left to the shepherds, I want to leave to you. And this is what it says. When Jesus was born, Luke 2, verse 8 to 11. It says, that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, same word, suddenly, right? An angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Don't be afraid. That same encouragement, don't be afraid. Why? Because we have good news that will bring great joy to the entire world. This story of Jesus on, on the cross and in the tomb and coming out of the tomb and being resurrected is not just for us to celebrate as a family, just as us on Sunday. It's for our world. Good news of great joy. He is still here today. He has conquered death for you. He took the pain. He took the punishment instead of you. Why? Because he desperately loves you and he desperately wants relationship with you. The king is still among us today. You might say, well, I have a life of addiction and misery. I want to say this to you. As Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. You might say, my life has been filled with affliction and with fear. I want to say, it is finished. You might say, my my past is defining my present and defining my future. I want to encourage you. It is finished. Let today be the day you leave it on the cross and you walk out of the tomb with Jesus. It is finished. You might say, but there's anger and there's pride. I want to say, it is finished. He is risen. His resurrection power still exists today. Leave your brokenness in the grave and come out a new creation. That's the promise that Jesus has. You aren't fighting alone. You never will be. It is finished. He is risen. He nailed it all to the cross and he left it in the grave. And he says, this is my free gift to you. No strings attached. Don't try and bring it back. Don't try. Just keep pursuing Jesus. Leave it in the grave where it belongs. It has already been paid for forever. Just turn back to him. He's standing there with his arms wide open. The only thing that came out of the tomb was Jesus and not our sin. We are free, you are saved. Joy can come back. Hope can come back. Peace can come back. Faith can come back. And life can come back. You know, I just, you know, as I was just thinking again for for us, for for our our search, our city, our country, is just really what our world needs this like you know what my family needs our friends need peace 
our world is in so much chaos and turmoil and you, you see it over and over and over again. You're seeing so many horrific things happening and I think it's our world and our people are crying out for peace. Peace be with you. I'm just gonna read that, what Jesus says again in that room. He says this suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. He said, peace be with you. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and in his side, and they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. That's what we need. We need his peace. I need his peace. My family needs his peace. That's the beauty of this Sunday is he is risen, and with him comes the fruit with them comes the gifts. He breathes the Holy Spirit. We have an arsenal to go and share Jesus, share this good news that will bring great joy to all people. I'm just going to pray. Really, it is the prayer of thanksgiving for what Jesus has done. So let's pray. God, I thank you. Jesus, we thank you that you took the cross not just for me but you took it instead of me you took what I deserved and you went for me and we thank you that that wasn't the end of the story you came back and today we look at the proof of everything you've done in our lives and we just come with a heart of gratitude that it is finished and that you are risen. We celebrate you today. We celebrate your joy today. And God, we say, as we pray for our city, as we pray for our families, as we pray for our church, as we pray for our businesses, as we pray for our nation, as we pray for our world, the big prayer we have today is peace be with you. Wherever we go, let us be carriers of peace and not panic. Let us carry your peace wherever we go in this world. In Jesus' name, amen.